Relationship advice. My, 30 male, ex, 30 female, wants to be back in my life as a friend years later, but I don't think I want anything to do with her. Sorry if this is long. My ex, Maddie, 30 female, and I dated in college for almost 3 years. We broke up because I caught her cheating on me red-handed with a guy in our apartment. I found out she had been cheating on me for at least 6 months. It wasn't entirely unexpected. In that time, I did see changes in her. I did suspect cheating in the back of my mind, but I wanted it to be not true, bad enough to push those hunches away I guess. I desperately tried talking with her about us, but she always said it was something else bothering her, stress getting to her etc, and she talked me out of worrying. I also found out later, that said guy introduced her to some hard substances, and she eventually began using. She dropped out of school. Found out from a mutual friend that it was because her parents cut her off monetarily, and she shacked up with the guy she cheated on me with. I was completely no contact with her since the breakup. I was hurt a lot emotionally by everything, and ended up struggling through some pretty deep depression and self-doubt. It was honestly the lowest point I've been at. A lot of that stemming from the fact that I was very much in love with Maddie. Was even at the point where I was considering proposing after we graduated prior to everything happening, and was saving up for a ring. Looking back, it was just a lot of me looking through rose-tinted glasses. Cut to now. I am happily married and my wife, Anna, 28 female, is amazing. Absolutely the best thing that has ever happened to me. We've been together for 5 years, married 1.5. She's been an incredibly supportive partner, and has helped me combat my self-doubt a lot. Still battle with it sometimes, but I'm in a much better place now compared to 9 years ago. We're also expecting our first child. I've never been happier in my life. Well, about 2 months ago, I got a call from a number I didn't recognize, and they left a message. It was Maddie. The message was essentially her, asking me to give her a call so we could talk. Apparently, she got my number off of one of our mutual friends Tina. I immediately talked to Tina. I was very angry at first, because Tina knew exactly what I had been through with that breakup, and she gave Maddie my number no question, without even asking me or anything. I found out from Tina that Maddie had been through rehab for her substance abuse, she had moved back closer to our area, she was trying to mend fences, and that I should hear her out. With that in mind, I decided to give Maddie a callback. I made up my mind before talking to her that I really didn't want any kind of prolonged contact with her, but I figured, if talking to me was somehow part of her recovery process, then I would try and at least talk to her. I also told my wife about everything that's going on. Anna and I had a long talk about it and went over how we both felt about the situation. I told my wife I think I should at least call Maddie, but really didn't want anything more than that, as I wanted to focus on her and our growing family. Anna was totally understanding. Maddie and I talked on the phone for a while. She apologized for everything. The cheating, the lies, all of the above. I accepted her apology and said I was glad she was doing better, because I genuinely am. We talked about our lives up to that point a bit. I didn't tell her everything but she does know I'm married. Toward the end of the conversation, she said she'd eventually like to be friends again, and asked if I wanted to meet up for coffee or something. I politely declined, and said that I'm glad she's on the way to healing, but I don't think I want any kind of friendship or relationship with her. We said our goodbyes and hung up. In the time since then, Maddie has not contacted me, but I've gotten messages and calls from Tina, as well as other people both Maddie and I know, saying that it's been so long and that I should try and rebuild some kind of friendship with my ex. I just don't think I want that. I just want to focus on my family, and not dredge anything else up from the past. I've tried to express that to anyone who's talked to me about the situation. Some understand my position, some still persist. I'm honestly just thinking about going full no contact and blocking people who keep trying to push myself and Maddie together. Any advice on how I could proceed otherwise? Or if that is the right choice? Should I give her a chance to be back in my life in some capacity? Now for the top advice. LOL no. If you don't want to, you don't have to. What kind of friends do you have? It's by no means all of my friends. But people who I've stayed in contact with from college that knew both of us, and honestly, even people who I haven't stayed in great contact with, that are trying to push me towards being her friend again. I would personally cut those out. Bizarre. There's nothing wrong with moving on and growing up in life. There are so many people in my past who things ended sort of weirdly with, but the past is the past. I'm a different person now and would be beyond confused if they wanted to make amends and hang out again. 
it's not necessary. Cheating and bad treatment aside, that book is closed, and you're now in a new chapter. To me, it would be like telling a college student to go back to kindergarten lol. Exactly. The people who have tried to push me back to this have confused me quite a bit. As well as my ex for wanting to be friends. I guess that's why I'm asking for thoughts and advice on here. I'm all for mending fences. But a pretty typical relationship with an ex when married, is to be friendly when you see them, but otherwise not seek them out. In my view, you've done what you need to. I would talk with Tina and simply probe why it is so important to the friend group to push for more. I do think trying to probe for details slash motives would be a good idea. I've even said something similar in responses, along the lines of, we can be civil, but it doesn't mean we have to be regularly in each other's lives. You may be right, that this goes beyond just helping Maddie heal as Tina has said to me. Still honestly thinking about just cutting that friend group off entirely. Now for the next story. Girlfriends, 26 female, ex-fiancé took his life, after he found out about me, 28 male, and blamed my girlfriend for everything, she is devastated and is beating herself up really bad about it. Pretty much my significant other was in a relationship with her ex-fiancé for almost 8 years. She relocated for work about 3 years ago, and he had a bunch of issues getting a visa to work in the US, so, they had been in a long distance relationship for a few years. They broke up about a year ago. The gist of it was, he wanted her to move back home due to COVID, and being able to work remotely. She did not want to move back home, and I don't know everything, but it caused them to break up. I met my girlfriend over a year and a half ago through work. Originally, it was more or less platonic, but after they broke up, we started spending a lot more time together. Eventually we started dating about 6 months ago, and since with COVID, we have pretty much been living with each other for the last few months. We get along great and we had already started talking about moving in together because everything was going so well. Two weeks ago, he apparently found out about us somehow, and stuff kind of went crazy. She started getting phone calls from him from all sorts of random numbers, basically begging her to talk to him. He sent emails from tons of different addresses, tried to message her on everything. Eventually, she wrote a long email pretty much explaining that she is happy, and she wants nothing to do with him ever again, and some other things. It stopped after that until this weekend on Friday when we were in bed, it started up again. She ended up just turning her phone off on my suggestion, and we went to bed. On Saturday, she found out from her parents that her ex had taken his life that night. She had a ton of missed calls, and messages pretty much saying what is about to happen. One of her old friends also sent screen caps of the post her ex had made, where he said a lot of awful things about her, and a lot of untrue things. Since then, she has been beating herself up bad. She asked me to stay with her until Monday where she said she wanted a night alone. Today I saw her and brought her favorite food, and she is a mess. She is beating herself up over this. I suggested talking to a mental health professional, but considering our city is flooded with COVID, the odds are she is not going to get much support in the short term. To make matters even worse, she has gotten a bunch of hate from friends slash relatives of his on Facebook over this. I don't know what I am supposed to do, aside from being supportive. Now for the top advice. Please, just be supportive. Her ex was mentally unwell, they were no longer together. This was not her responsibility. Thanks, I am trying to be as supportive as possible and give her whatever she needs. It just kind of frustrates me that I feel powerless to do anything. My sister took her life after a relationship breakup. She texted him her plan, and he saw the message and didn't do anything besides saying please don't. I don't blame him at all for her death she made her choice. Her disproportionate reaction was not his responsibility. I'm so sorry you and your girlfriend are dealing with this mess. It's not her fault. She'll probably be affected by this for a long time though, seeing a bereavement psychologist to help her manage this grief, would be a really good thing to do, as you suggested. Getting on a wait list now, will mean she will have some professional support in the future, it's never too late. For now, Continuing to be understanding and letting her express her emotions, is probably the best you can do, as well as practical support like providing food and helping with housework if you can. Keep reassuring her that it isn't her fault, but it's still okay and normal for her to feel however she is feeling. Being with her or giving her space as she needs, is good, though if she withdraws and doesn't want to see you for days, perhaps making sure a friend or family member looks in on her would be helpful. Perhaps turning her Facebook to private or suspending her account for a while might be a good idea, so she doesn't have to deal with the, 
frankly awful, unfair, nasty, messages from his family. My thoughts, if he blamed her for the incident, he most likely ended himself to hurt her, not because she didn't want him. I think she needs professional help to help her see that this isn't her fault. If it wasn't her, it could be someone or something else that he'd blame it on. I am self-ending, in my lowest, I hated my stepdad so much I wanted to hurt him, since I felt he didn't care about me. Started arguments and talked behind my back. My plan was to off myself where he worked, so the first thing he saw was my body when he got there. My mom sensed something was up that day and stopped me on my way there. I had one of those two birds with one stone in my mind. I got help by the way and doing a lot better. My friend's late husband did this. He ended himself just to hurt her, because she left him. His family blames her, yet they were nowhere to be found. His niece ripped into her on social media. She only saw the side of him that he wanted her to see. I ripped into her and his entire family. Saying they had no idea what was going on in their marriage, and that she wasn't to blame. They are nasty people and always were. It's no one's fault when someone end themselves. Some people are in so much pain they can't see any way out, and others do it to hurt someone. They want to hurt them in the worst and biggest way possible, so they will always have an effect on their life forever. OP needs to get his girlfriend into counseling now. She needs help immediately. Thanks for your help slash suggestions slash well wishes, she was able to get a referral for someone through work, and is going to start seeing a therapist through Zoom for now. I am just going to be as supportive as I can. The last story is titled. My cheating ex-boyfriend says he is going to harm himself if I don't get back with him. Basically what the title says. Quick backstory, we have been together for almost 4 years, engaged for one. He was emotionally cheating almost the whole time we were together with different women, and gaslighting me every time I tried to confront him about his overprotection of his phone. Anyhow, I tried to forgive him for about one and a half year after I found out about his cheating and I eventually realized that even though I had really forgave him, I can't live with the fear of this happening ever again. Even though I understand he did love me and it wasn't anything I did slash didn't do, and it was always him and his bad mental state which led him to feel like he needed confirmation from people hence reaching out to women being all flirty and stuff, I broke up with him on August of 2020. From that moment, we kept being in contact from time to time because we still love one another, and want the best for the other person. Today. He said he can't get over me and doesn't want to. Then he pleaded me to get back together with him. When I said I can't and I won't go back to him, he implied that he wouldn't be around for much longer then, and I was going to regret it sooner or later. So, I got all upset and said I would think about getting back together with him, and will answer him shortly. Thing is, I hate people who emotionally manipulate others, and can see them for who they are. But I don't think he did it all together to manipulate me. I mean sure, he did exactly that lol, however, I'm almost positive he will go through with offing himself, because he has no emotional support, I was that for 4 years, and with the lockdown, everything is worse than ever, and he doesn't have a creative outlet to let his frustration, anger, or sadness out. He is all alone in his house being depressed most of the time, so when he says about hurting himself, I believe him. Now my question is, should I get back with him? I still do love him dearly, and have almost completely forgiven him but I was kind of excited to leave him and trying to find myself again after his infidelity. Still, though I miss him almost every day and always think no one will love me again out there other than him, basically, I could easily go back to be with him and enjoy and cherish our moments together, but would most likely feel horrible at the same time. Always scared he might relapse and flirt with other women, or that his infidelities will become known and everyone will either pity me or make fun of me. Or how do I let him go easily? Unfortunately, I believe him when he talked about disappearing, and I know his life slash his problems and how much it sucks right now for him, and I know it wouldn't be entirely about me if he did do it. I mean, if I was his only problem and he said he was going to end himself, I wouldn't believe him. But considering everything he has been through, I am really scared and anxious he will go through with it. Any advice will be appreciated guys. Please try to be gentle with me. I'm a mess these past few hours. Now for the top advice. You ended the relationship. You are not responsible for him. These threats of his are emotional abuse. Go no contact. Do not communicate with him at all. Absolutely not. Don't reward him for bad behavior. He's weaponizing his mental health and it's toxic. Contact his family slash friends so they can look after him, but stop contact this instant. He can burden his cheat partners with his BS. He's pulling on your heartstrings because you're a good person, and what he's doing is lower than low.
OP, you are not a first responder. You are not equipped with the knowledge on how to talk people off ledges. There is absolutely nothing you can do to stop him from taking his life if he is motivated enough. If he was motivated enough, he would have taken his life without telling you. This is just unabashed manipulation. Next time he pulls this stuff, call 911 and put him in a psych ward for a week. It'll teach him not to be a freaking manipulative Mike Hunt. And if he is really self-ending, then it will help him. You cannot help him. You cannot do anything for him. Internalize this. Absolutely do not get back together. Do you plan to forever be held hostage by him for the rest of your life? Tell him that you're not getting back together, and that it is no longer helping the mental health of either of you being in constant contact. And that you feel that you need some breathing room and are going no contact for the foreseeable future. Call his friends and family, and tell them that he has threatened to harm himself and that they need to look after him. If he has no one, then call the police to do a welfare check on him. Anyone but you can look after him. Getting back with a cheater because they might harm themselves, is a horrible reason to date someone. It's a bluff. Call it. He won't do anything. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.